Hi everybody, welcome back to the cabin. So that was an interesting turkey hunt so far this year. I think it's uh, April 28th or something like that. So the season's only been open for four or five days. And uh, I got my first uh, gobbler, weighed about 19 pounds. And uh, it came fairly simply. Um, it's been a few turkeys around. Uh, they're not very common up here. It's not like um, agriculture or area, agricultural areas where they congregate, especially at uh, on crops. And at this time of year, they become pretty predictable and easy, relatively easy to pattern. Doesn't mean they're easy to hunt, but they're easy to pattern. And uh, that's just not the case up in this area. It's Canadian Shield, and it's just dense forest and mostly public land. So it's a completely different hunt than even what I started. Uh, with years ago now I've been uh, hunting turkeys on and off since early 90s I think uh, me and Darren and Jeremy I think it was got um, our took the turkey course safety course together and I've had my license since then but I don't think I hunted till 99 for the first time it's, um, just because I didn't have areas to go Turkeys were uh, pretty well extinct in Ontario up until around 1984 when the uh, Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters and some other groups got together, reintroduced them, and then several years later they did so well that there was a, that we were able to open up a hunt, a controlled hunt, and then slowly added areas. So this is way further north than their typical range or their historical range, and I'm fortunate to be able to hunt them up this way. Now the reason the backstory is significant is because what I just did is not typical for a uh, turkey hunter and for turkey hunting, not the typical way to do it. Um, because of the nature of the forest here and the fact that they aren't, um, a couple things, they're harder to pattern so you have to do a lot of walking to find them. But mainly I think the biggest thing is that um, finding food sources is a little bit more difficult in the Canadian Northwoods because you just get because it's natural it's not um, crops like I said so I go to the, ended up sh uh, shooting that where the um, there was some beech trees and acorn or uh, oaks so there was acorns and beech nuts on the ground and uh, uh, they're in the crop you could see that it was eating those things and then some other you know, greenery un unrecognizable greenery um, bugs are just starting to come up now and, and get active so they'll be eating the bugs now as well I'm probably focusing on that but because of that they're widespread traveling through these forests but also um, what it allows me to do is to hunt much more naturally and without um, props so in the past when I first started hunting like I said turkeys I had a turkey blind so carried a uh, fold up turkey blind on my back and then just popped it up it's like a mini tent and I would hunt out of that so that I could be concealed and also use decoys and the reason for that is I was hunting the edge of agricultural fields so the turkeys could see a long way they could see a decoy they could respond to the calls and they could come to uh, they would come to the location if you know turkey hunting and any hunting uh, more often than not than not they don't come especially if there's a hen. They, um, we can only hunt gobblers, we can only hunt the males in the spring and the um, easiest way to hunt them is to, or the most enjoyable as well, is to call them to your location. But if they have hens that are that they're trying to breed that are not on their nest yet, then those uh, gobblers, those males, will want to stay with those hens. So it's really hard to call them away from the hen. But um, Still, that's a viable uh, method and it's yeah, probably the most common and the most successful method is to, like I said, set up in one location, uh, let the birds come to you, but call and try to get them to the location and attract them to your location with decoys. Um, with all the hills, so the good thing here is that they don't have that long view, so they can't see the uh, decoy, so it's kind of pointless to carry one. But also, I, mean, I get this opportunity to call them, uh, hear where they're uh, calling back from, head in that, air, in that direction with hills between me and them. And then I'll just set up on the bottom side of a hill and let them come to me over the hill. Um, now the other thing is, because I, I'm doing sort of the run and gun method of hunting, I also end up um, not carrying a box call. And I do have a box call, I'll show it to you, but I haven't used that thing since the year I bought it. And the reason for that is, uh, um, I, I don't want to have things I have to carry. I don't want things making noise as I'm moving through the woods. 
and I just don't like something else to maintain. I used to you know, more often not use a mouth diaphragm call so it goes in your mouth and I was got pretty good at uh, blowing that and, and calling turkeys with that but those dry out between seasons I didn't want to spend more money every season getting another one or two of those so I learned to call turkeys with my mouth um, and I, you know it's a sort of bushcraft or wood lore principle that the more you know the less you have to carry that's the way I hunt now I call deer called caribou, called moose, um, turkeys, duck, goose a little bit, anything else that's maybe it. So I call all those animals and birds uh, just using my mouth so I don't have to carry a call. I find that very efficient. Um, camouflage, you can see I'm wearing drab colors. I, you know, it's fun to buy the equipment and the gear the clothing and all that stuff but honestly there's a lot of times that you can get away with not having that but again it depends on the hunting method so if I was sitting at the edge of a field trying to attract turkeys across the field they have extremely good eyesight and they pick up color very well and if I was not well camouflaged it would be hard for me to fool them when they have that much time to assess the situation and focus in on on um, anything abnormal in that setting so if you're wearing something that you know, even those feathers on the on the arrows, the uh, fletching that were orange, they would see that and they would typically spook from that. But again, by the time they're seeing me, they're within range. You know, I'm behind a tree or they're behind a tree and I'm able to draw and make that uh, shot when, it, um, when the time or when the opportunity presents itself and before they're able to identify me as something unnatural. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you because if, again, if you're a hunter and you've seen the way I I hunted in this video and I have in other videos. It's um, not typical and uh, it's extremely hard to film and for that reason I'll probably never actually get a full hunt on camera. Can't have somebody walking with me. It's too noisy. It's too, uh, there's too much movement and it's too many opportunities for the game to pick up that second person. So I'm always hunting alone. It's too hard to carry a big camera typically. Um, so I'm usually just using the GoPro and you get that split second you only get one opportunity typically and if I'm trying to fiddle with a camera that's going to be um, uh, very counterproductive almost impossible for me at least anyway if you wanted to see some of the well I don't know how many videos I think I did a video about mouth calling in the past but I on other species but I know for sure that I have a moose video from three or four years ago uh, early September called in uh, a big bull moose uh, just using my mouth and and uh, branches and stuff um, called them right to my location and I, I've done that a lot I've called a lot of moose in that way and deer buck uh, deer well does and bucks but anyway I've done a lot of that so you now if you want to check that out um, I'll try to find it and put the link in the description below or you can just search uh, moose calling or moose hunting or something like that anyway that's it I just wanted to share that with you so thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing the cabin next time take care